um, in the past weeks, we've studied um, the different parts of the board, right? And the reason for that is so that you know where to put all of these items. Do we really need to put them at the front door for everyone to see? So let's find out, okay? So here are the things that we're going to need. I tried to do some missing plus for the garnishes. Uh, as you can see, they're in the garnish tray. Never mind the wiring because it's for the light. Okay. And I have there are some glasses that um, you would know. Okay. And you're supposed to know actually, so I'm going to say some of them. Introduce some of them to you, okay? This is the high ball. Okay, as you can see the thing is that there's like a round ball at the bottom of the glass, okay? And this is the water goblet, okay? This is where usually you put the water of the gas. And then we have here the Collins glass, which is a bit taller than the high ball. And it's slim. Um, you can also call it the Pilsner. Because there's this slight difference between the two, okay? Um, and then we have here a typical wine glass. It wasn't specified whether it's a red wine or red wine glass or a white wine glass. Okay, but this is just a typical um, cheap wine glass. Okay, so there, the rocks. Okay, as so you can see there, that's the glass. It's a bit um, wider and heavier. Okay, and then we have here some juice glasses where you put the fruit juices juice <laughs> okay if that makes sense and then um here we have the fruits that we're going to need today as i demonstrate um some of the simple garnish cuts that you would need to operate a bar then we have here some tools and utensils and equipment used for garnishing okay and also yeah you can see there are some straws and some other supplies that um, we often use but we put at under door but since you know, this is just a makeshift bar which is not really a bar itself okay so you can just imagine okay that we should put these supplies okay these supplies the under bar okay that's where it belongs because guests don't need to see them okay also the ice box where we got all the ice in the ice bucket should be there too okay but as you know the ice box is actually my refrigerator or the freezer so i didn't have to put any ice box under there okay and then what else Okay, all the other stuff, okay, I don't have to put on top of the bar because these are the things that I'm going to use. And most of the time, these things actually go at the back bar, but I don't have that. See? <laughs> I don't have a table there, so there's no back bar for this video. And so, usually at the back bar, by the way, um, you would see, okay, just imagine, please. You would see some signages for the, the special drinks for the day or the menu that the drinks or the food that the bar is offering the guest. And you may see there also the top shop where they put the most popular drinks of the bar for the guests to see. And what else? And also they would put there the, the big equipment that they would need to go here at the front bar because it would just crowd the bar just like this right so if i do have a back bar i would put the fruits there and the other supplies okay these should not be shown at the front bar okay what they need to see is just the drink itself okay and then also in the under bar aside from what i mentioned the straw the supplies okay the tissue and the ice box you should you should also find there the sink okay but i don't have a sink here okay uh what else um, and also at the top of the front bar there should be the over bar 
where you can hang your wine glasses or oh, like perhaps okay you can hang your your wine glasses like this okay i'll show them to you later okay but for now let's just set up okay so now i'll be showing you um some of our garnish tools with utensils and equipment okay first and foremost we have here the garnish container as you can see here okay so here inside every bin or container you can see different kinds of garnish which i prepared beforehand this is what we call mist and gloss in the food and beverage industry where the fruits are washed thoroughly and sliced okay and then put here in separate bins so that you can easily get the appropriate garnish for each drink okay of course you're not supposed to pick, pick each one of them with your hand so what we're gonna use is a tongue okay we're picking up the pieces of fruits for our garnish when we need them okay so there so is done now let's go to the other tools with the tools and equipment we have here okay so here's a fruit baller we can use it to ball out some of the fruits and shape them accordingly into a ball okay which we can put um we can prick okay a toothpick uh, in so they would look appetizing as a garnish in the drinks okay so this is the fruit baller, okay, and this is what we call the channel knife, okay, channel knife, I should say, the channel knife, and some more tongs, okay, can't get one of those, and then we have here the bar spoon, okay, along with a fork at the end, okay, so there, this is a Japanese bar spoon which is multi functional because we have a spoon at the end and a fork at the other end so what's the use of this one this is for for example we have a drink okay and then we can stir the drink by doing this we don't have to do this okay we don't stir drinks like this in bartending since we have a bar spoon which is designed accordingly for this purpose so we just do this okay and what's the use of the fork it's for picking up pieces of garnish if we don't have uh, a tong okay a garnish tong we can use this to pick up uh, fruits like this okay so that's the use of the bar spoon okay by the way this is the japanese bar spoon multi-functional okay but then the other bar spoon doesn't have doesn't have a fork at the end it's the european one okay next we have here we have the jigger this is for the measurement of liquid okay um so there it's double sided okay just a double jigger and we handle it um usually not like this but like this just like a pro <laughs> Okay, and then next we have, of course we use um, one side, one at a time, okay? We don't use them together, if you're wondering, okay? We just use the appropriate amount or measurement, okay, for the drink. So if we need a smaller one, then we use this, and if we need a bigger one, we use this. Okay, what else? This is the strainer, if you're wondering. Uh, why there's a spring in it okay this is to strain the seeds and the eyes in a drink this is commonly used for okay this is commonly used for the boston shaker okay i also have a boston shaker here and when you have your drink here and some eyes are just going to shake it okay and when you're done you're supposed to you know pour of course, I'm going to remove the other part, okay? So, just like this. For example, I'm so sorry. 
So again, so this is the balsam shaker, and then you shake the drink like this. All right. Make sure that it's sealed, okay, before you shake it, or else it's gonna spill all over your body, okay. And then, so if you're done shaking, okay, you're gonna remove the stop part, all right, and remove the stop part, and then you're going to pour. You're going to pour your drink like this, okay. And then when you're already done pouring, by the way, the farther you pour, the better for presentation. Okay, so you have to really practice that. And so, um, the problem is, most of the time, the seeds and the ice, okay, go also into the drink. So what you can do is use the hot burn strainer to strain, okay, the ice so that it won't go into the drink. By the way, this is how you use it, okay? Just make sure that your fingers are out of the way, okay? And then, such. And then it would, of course, restrain the seeds from dropping into the drink. The seeds and the ice. Okay, so that's how it is. Okay. Of course, this is not for garnishing. This is for making drinks. The channel knife, another kind of channel knife, and this is well, this one comes with a zester. You see, it's called channel knife because you can see there the channels. Okay, this is for decorating fruits. Okay, and this one in the middle is for zesting. Okay, what else? And the other bar tools here are not really for garnishing. Okay, but this one is the muddler. When you have a fruit there and you want to mash it, okay? Okay, so there. So if you have, okay, for example, a glass and there's a fruit inside and you want to mash it, like such, this is called the muddler, okay? And what else? Uh -huh. So this is the bar blade for opening bottles, okay? This one has a part for exhibition like this. Then you can <laughs> do that. And that's for clear telling. You don't really have to do that. Okay? I'm just going to show you how it's done. What else? What else? Okay. All the others are uh, for wine. Okay. But I just want to show you also because this is a good opportunity to show you. Okay. This is the wing type corkscrew. This is wing type because it looks like sorry I have to this is wing type because it looks like they have it has wings. Okay? You can see? Okay. This is for locking the wine. Okay. As you open it. Okay. And then we also have the typical corkscrew that barmans use. Okay? So there. This is for opening the lid. Top of the wine. Usually there's like um, a cover, okay. a wrapper on top of the wine. This is how this is the use of this one. It's like a cutter for that. We're going to open it like around, okay. And then cut around it. And then we have the corkscrew also. So there. And then this one is for opening bottles. So as you can see, we have different types of port screws. So there, you can also see some kitchens and bars have scissors, okay? This is for food, okay? This is for cutting ingredients. And for us, for cutting garnish into our desired shapes. So what else? I guess that's all for now. So, by the way, there's a difference between the ice shovel and the tong, ice tong. This one is for a group, right? Group of ice to pick up, group of groups of ice. And then this one is for picking up one by one, right? So there. The tong goes with the ice bucket. Okay, and also the ice shovel, if it's big enough, you can use it like this, okay?
I guess everything's covered, but I just wanna I just wanna tell you one more time that all of the tools and utensils and equipment that you've seen in this video are not necessary for garnishing. Okay. Okay. So let me just show you what the tools, utensils, and equipment are you sh are specifically for garnishing. Okay. So number one is the paring knife. This is a small type of knife. Because it's manageable, you can easily cut. Okay, you can easily cut the the fruits or the vegetable in your desired shape and size. Okay, mm, unlike the usual chef knife or the kitchen knife, it's too big to handle. Okay, by the way, um, maybe this is a good uh, opportunity to discuss with you how to handle the knife. Never handle the knife like. Um, Especially if you're going to touch the blade, never do that, okay? Always make sure that your hand is in the handle. That's the reason why it's called the handle. You put your hand in there, okay? And then we have here the spine. There, you can see, right? It's the spine. It's like the backbone, right? So, spine, okay? And then we have here the point. It is the tiniest and sharpest part of the knife, okay? And what else? This is the heel. Is this like, this looks like um, an inclined heel of a female shoes, right? That's a heel. And this is the blade. Never touch the blade, okay? Um, I can remember when I was applying for the teaching position in the public school. One of the demonstrators there said, never touch the blade, and she really touched it, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> never touch it. <laughs> so, yeah, never touch the blade, okay? That's a scary thing, right? So, yeah, that's the basic parts of the knife. Never touch the blade, okay? You can touch the, the back of this, this, this part of the spine a little bit if the knife is too big. Okay, so you can have more control, but be careful, okay? And when you're handling fruits, remember to wash them thoroughly with just water. You don't have to add any chemical. And then you can make sure that you have a tight grip of the fruit, okay? This is a bit dangerous though if you do this. You might cut some parts of your nail or your, the tip of your fingers. So it's better to use your knuckles. To lock the fruit down okay but me i got used to this but if you're gonna read some of the safety precautions in cutting they use their knuckles okay, okay. Anyway. so there what are the other tools and utensils and equipment for garnish also have the scissors kitchen shears you call them kitchen shears um photos of course, the channel knife and some sesters if you're going to need them. Uh, the channel knife and a uh, fruit baller. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I guess that's okay. We can also use, of course, the bar spoon. Okay, for garnishing. Okay. So, we also have here the garnish tray. Please watch my fun video entitled Making Edible Garnish. Its link will be posted in the description box for this video. Thank you so much. Please keep on watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and supporting. See ya!